Hi guys, my name is Aina Paisley. I'm an artist from Moscow, Russia and also an official ambassador of Zenar Supplies. Today we will continue getting familiar with Zenar Supplies oils which uh, come in this infinity series in three different sets. Uh, the first one is essential palette, then there is a impressionist palette and then there is a portrait palette. Each of the set has three different completely different uh, sets of colors. To get more information about the sets and the first impression on unpackaging the sets and getting familiar with the paints, please check out other videos on our channel. They are pretty informative concerning what paints are included in the, in the sets and just, you know, a little bit more information about the paints altogether. But today I really wanted to just continue, uh, as I already said, getting familiar with these paints and uh, try to do a little painting that is more of a, like a demo of techniques that you can use to paint with oils. Obviously there are all sorts of different ways to paint with oils. And, uh, but I would say like the most uh, uh, common and most popular are a la prima technique and the layering technique. So the difference between them is uh, that a la prima is uh, the technique where you just paint uh, a painting. Usually it's uh, never big, it's quite small and sometimes it's even more of a study, you know, painting, not like a real, real painting. The main difference is that you paint it in one go. So it's... Uh, you don't really set a painting aside and let it dry and then put another layer on. Uh, this is more of a, you know, just sit down and paint in right away. And the layering technique is obviously the the opposite one, which, uh, uh, as you can understand from the name of it, is comes in layers where you put one layer and then you let it dry and then you layer on top of it another one and another one and you can actually go like with infinite, you know, layers until you're happy with the result. At least for now, we're going to stick to a la prima technique. Uh, it's just better because you will get to see the result right away, where with the layering technique, it usually takes so much patience for you to wait until it dries, and then you have to layer it again, and then dry again. You know, it's just a whole, such, such a long process. It's really um, not convenient for a video tutorial, as I feel like. If you're interested, please stay tuned. We will get to know my palette, and also paint a little demo of a cute little Fruit. <laughs> so for today's tutorial we will obviously need a palette and I'm using this wooden type of palette which is really suitable for oil painting if you're not keen on having a really clean palette because I mean it is going to look like this for most of the time so if you want to for your palette to be able uh, if you want your if you want to be able to clean your palette, you really need to uh, buy a glass palette or like a plexiglass palette. These are the ones that are easy to clean. I don't mind having a dirty palette like this, so I'll be using this. And we're also going to be using for the painting, obviously, the Zenar Supplies Renoir set, which I use in almost all of my videos. And today I'm going to be using mostly the bigger brushes, which are these. Uh, I love both the Badger brush uh, mix and also this, uh, the, the uh, Chunk Hog. So I'll just uh, be using this today and obviously we'll need a mixing knife. Also the paints that I'm going to be using are these. Actually, uh, it really depends on what color of an apple you're going to paint. Uh, I personally uh, really advise you not to paint not to choose for your first subject a red apple because it's really high in chroma and it's hard to see, you know, the darks and the lights because red is such an intense color. I would rather you go with something uh, like a green or a yellow apple is even better. Green is classic. So today this is my palette and I just think uh, that, you know, it's, uh, this is like the the best of the best for me uh, to for any subject you know this is basically what's always on my palette it's um, uh, always these earthy uh, colors that are really important yellow ochre and raw umber uh, these are really important to uh, just dilute you know and um, kind of tone down the really intense colors that we have here so I'm always using this also the yellows is always a lemon yellow we got this one uh, and the cadmium yellow hues so this is more of a like brighter yellow uh, and this is more of an orange yellow obviously a white is a must in your palette 
And then the blues are really important as well. Uh, cobalt, ultramarine blue, and cerulean blue are like, you know, just key to mixing beautiful greens. So this mix together with this gives you like an infinite, really infinite mixes and possibilities for your greens. So viridian and chromium oxide are the only two greens that are included in the whole infinity series. I personally only, um, discovered chromium oxide when I got these sets by Center Supplies but now I really love this color so if I have the possibility I will include it in my palette if I don't it's okay if you pass on that the radian is personally for me it's a beautiful vibrant color which I never use separately it's always in a mixes and usually it's to create these vibrant greens uh, combining with the blues and the yellows it's just perfect you know to make your greens really vibrant and beautiful just beautiful also a violet is a must in my palette like if i can pass on i know the greens i can even uh, just take one blue instead of three uh the purple is <laughs> is something i would rather have in my palette to be honest because i just uh, i think that it's such a beautiful color to also mix in your greens because we all know that greens is the the you know the hardest color to create so that it looks beautiful and believable so it's always good for your darker greens i'd say and it's also a very very um key color to create beautiful grays and obviously the reds i tend to have at least two reds which is cadmium and uh, well you can use rubin red or alizarin crimson and uh, it's just it just has to be uh a this cooler red color. Let's proceed to set up the paints and then proceed to our painting. So first things first, my whites always go in this corner. For some reason I just, you know, kind of started doing it this way and I love how I have always have just the lightest colors mixed in this little corner. You can even see that this is like a darker, more vibrant area and this is more white. And the reason for separating the white color is that it it's really hard to, you know, uh, if it contaminates your darkest colors, it's really hard to get to get it back to being dark. It's almost impossible, to be honest. So uh, even when you use a brush that already has a little bit of white in it in a darkest color, it will contaminate it. So I would suggest you avoid that either clean your brush or use a different br brush and uh, just try to separate your all your lightest and white colors uh even on your palette is best this is my reds and yellows area and this is my blues darkest colors blues and greens area so this is how i like to set up uh kind of the warmest colors in here and then the coolest here also here uh next to the white is my little area where i put uh three of the key colors that i also have always on my palette and i usually have to pre-mix those before i start painting and they look like this it's uh a light yellow light violet and light uh, i guess greenish blue i just like to keep this around because they help to also create this beautiful light uh, complicated colors also have here my older palette where i kept my paints so some of them are still good and i'm going to put them on the palette i'll start with the yellows also please notice whenever i put a color in i always tend to kind of put a little streak of color rather than a blob because usually it, it just helps to keep uh, the rest of the colors clean whenever I dip my brush into it. The only part contaminated is this little corner so whenever I need a really clean color I just kind of wipe it off and keep using the clean color. <laughs> So this is how my palette looks like. Basically, these are all just the colors that I uh, already mentioned and I arranged them like this. You see all the blues are in here with the viridian, which is green. Also, there's the yellows and the reds and the white and also my pre-mixed yellow, which is a little bit of cadmium uh, yellow and ochre and a lot of white. Or you can also use Indian yellow 
and use white and this is just uh, dex and purple with a lot of white and this is cerulean blue and a little bit of cobalt blue mixed with a lot of white we're going to paint on this uh, oil paper I feel like a canvas is kind of a waste for a small study like this so I use paper instead just be sure to use oil paper because uh, a regular paper will not work great with oils this is small cardboard to just scotch it scotch tape it down oh also i forgot to mention that i'll be using some uh, orderless solvent to paint this one with a mix of a little bit of damar varnish i tend to mix uh, 10 parts of odorless solvent and one part of damar varnish to mix with my paint and make them more fluid i'll have a little jar with just odorless solvent to be able to bathe my brushes and clean them and obviously you'll need a cloth or a toilet paper so uh, we're ready to kind of trace our future subject and start painting. Mix it with a lot of, of uh, this, you know, mixing varnish and uh, waterless solvent that I have. And I'm kind of sort of will just vaguely trace out the outside of my apple. So because we're using an alla prima technique, that means that we're going to put, we, we can't really layer the paint, so much rather we will just try to put, you know, um, one brush stroke next to another. And But this is not like a hard rule, because I tend to layer sometimes, you know, the colors, especially if they're kind of, uh, in the same family so the greens you know they mix together really well and it creates beautiful uh, sort of uh, you know effects but uh, just for the sake of understanding the technique we will try not to layer but rather you know just put the strokes next to each other uh, I personally like to start with the darkest uh, parts of the object. So I dip a little bit, my brush in a little bit of this medium, mixing medium that I created. And I'm going to start with this, you know, darker area of my apple. And for that, I'm going to take uh, these blues, a little bit of blues, and create um, a green. So I need a green which is not that dark in the painting, to be honest, in the reference photo. A little bit of raw umber to kind of, you know, tone it down. A little ochre. A little ultramarine blue. And I just sort of try to make it a little complicated, this color. And put it down, and immediately I see it's a little bit dark so i'm going to mix in that yellow and kind of you know put it down like so so you have to kind of sh check the shape of the apple and you trace down the darkest parts of of it which is obviously inside you know where the stem is this is the darkest part of your apple as well here and um right where it touches you know the table and also, please don't forget that your uh, round, a round object, which is also an apple, always will always have uh, a lighter area in here, which is called a reflex. And obviously, this is the part where the light is uh, is hitting, so it's going to be the lightest. So I'm kind of I already, you know, mapped out the darkest uh, parts of my apple. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to catch that mid tone. And for that, I'm going to mix a little bit of more of that yellow. And also, I'm taking my beautiful, uh, you know, turquoise green and sort of add it to. And to create, you know, just a little bit more vibrant and lighter, lighter color. And you can see how vibrant and beautiful it starts to look already. And I put it down here. So this is the medium toned I guess you can call it medium tone and I sort of blend them together with the darkest part so you see how shape of our apple 
is already coming together although we didn't do much work we just put down two different colors but because we chose the right tone and the right placement for them uh, our object already looks a little bit like an apple which is great and also with this same color I'm going to trace my zone the area of a reflex like so and I'm going to add a little bit of this darker green of a previous darker green to sort of blend it together so it doesn't look so you know unnatural so kind of like so uh, the great thing about uh, oils is that it's really easy to mix you know and create so soft gradients which is kind of harder for example in acrylics but uh, the thing that is hard about um, oils at the same time that it's harder than in acrylics is uh, the fact that the colors are easily mixed together and if you don't pay attention you can end up with a really muddy painting which uh, is uh, the problem for me most of the time when I paint with oils I mean, if I have a problem, so to avoid that, please pay attention to the fact that uh, whenever you put a color down, the the layer beneath it is not completely dry. So it's going to mix in your uh, your future layers that you're putting down, and it's going to create that muddy sort of effect if the colors are not mingling well together. So now we're facing with the slightest part of our apple and we're just going to use uh, the same green mixture that we already have on the paper and I'm going to add a little bit more of the useful vibrant and a little bit more of that yellow that I have on the side and also this lemon yellow. So I'm going to create this beautiful kind of lime green. I'm going to add a little more of my solvent and then I'm going to put this down here on my lightest part and immediately I see it's not light enough so I'm putting more of this lighter shades and try to mix it in gently, almost not touching the area so uh, now you see that our apple is kind of looking like an apple which is great news you like we can add a little more light to the lighter area although we do not have i personally do not have a reference with a strong uh light source I'm going to add it anyway so for that i'm uh taking my lighter and i'm this time i'm mixing a little bit of more white and i'm adding this yellow So I want to create this cooler feeling in the light like so and also don't forget this part is going to catch some light and this will be the darkest parts of our apple so they stay this way and then I'm going to add you know just a little bit of this kind of just feel like it completes the look now I'm going to take a smaller brush I just want to add a little more of details and I'm going to paint that stem which for which I'm going to use a little bit of raw umber dyed some purple you know just sort of create this dark color and I'm just going to put that in like so And don't forget to put the darkest part in here. And then just finish it off with a little. So obviously add the, um, the shadow. And for that I'm going to mix a little bit of dye some purple and create this and raw umber and create this sort of you know weird color and I'm also going to dilute it quite strongly so it's almost watercolor this helps me create this um, you know just uh, transparent shadows what's really important usually when you paint is to create a transparent shadow so I'm going to do this 
and uh, also while it's quite transparent it still has a really dark spot underneath the the object so i'm going to emphasize that with a little bit of burnt umber and dark some purple and just add it in like so and because i used a lot of you know mixing medium it's quite watercolory so it's easy to blend in Okay, and then if you want, if you feel really adventurous, what I like to do is add a background as well. For that, I'm going first to tone my paper with this beautiful ruby red, which is going to create a beautiful contrast with the apple. So I'm going to kind of dilute it really, really watery with, with the mixing medium. Be careful with the outline of your object here. And then I want to take a little bit of toilet paper, rub all that out so it even dries out even quicker. Can actually leave it at that it looks quite cute but I'm going to go ahead and add my background which is going to be I'm going to be violet because you know green just goes lovely with violet so I'm going to take this color here sort of mix it together and create this beautiful purple and you know just fill in like so really really broad strokes and do not be afraid sort of your bravery test and then really go slightly around your shadow pay attention to not mess up the shape of it just go around your object like so and Oils will take care of the blending and you know the sharp edges of your object. I'll just go like that. Maybe add a little bit of this beautiful vibrant color here. And then a little bit more of the violet in here. Sort of blend in the shadows. nice transparent shadow you got here and there you have this is your first apple thank you for watching this video please don't forget to rate it and put a thumbs up if you liked it this way we will be more motivated to create a great content for you in the future also don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like the content to not miss any of the new videos because i'm planning to put up so many more interesting material for you also if you have an instagram account please don't forget to publish your you know results of the exercises that you do or the video tutorials that you follow so we can maybe give you feedback if you're interested in it and of course if you have any questions please comment them down below i'll be happy to help you and answer all of them and if you want to get more familiar with my painting and my artworks please 
visit my Instagram. This is my Instagram name. You can just Google it and go to my account. I will be happy if you wish to follow me. Thank you and Happy New Year. Goodbye.